Hey guys, before we get started, we wanted to tell you that because we're new to this and we're still learning how to do all this, we've decided to bump all of the Patreon tiers down a level. So now you can get the episodes early for $1 a month. You can Mm -hmm. get the video version for just $5 a month. You can get a free t-shirt with the $10 a month. Yeah, we really decided that we should just make it as easy as possible to get any of the extra stuff Yeah, why would we make it harder for people to watch the video version? The video version is fun. Yeah. So you can go check that out now. And also, if you missed it last week, the full documentary of my terrible stand-up experience, as well as the bonus episode that we recorded with my brother about that, that's available for $1 on Patreon. So go check it all out. It's going to be a lot more fun, and we're going to add more to it as we go along we want patreon to be fun damn it (laughs) god damn it we're gonna make it fun (laughs) so with that enjoy the episode and now we can just that whole thing it's in our past the whole data loss it's gone it's over we move forward with more game more game more pod before you know it we'll have edited those episodes those episodes will be its own thing that should hopefully be interesting but it will be over yes and i won't have to even emotionally confronted again. Welcome to No One Can Know About This, a podcast where we play every Final Fantasy. I'm Jeff Ekman. And I'm Ryan Kazmiski. And here we go, Season 3, Episode 10. Mm -hmm. We just finished the opera segment of the game. Yes. We are heading towards the Magitech Research Facility. Yeah, we're taking our first foray into the Empire, Uh whereas before we've been sort of in the territories they're threatening, and now we're like going into the heart of it. Yeah, and the last thing that you heard was the end of one of the nights. It was the end of like night two of us playing these games. God, you know what, this time it's hard for me to even keep track. Yeah. There's so much more game, and we took longer to play it. Right, but this starts at a new day, Mm -hmm. and the new day begins with a really funny realization that I had, which is those episodes back a while ago, episodes three and four, the beginning of the game and stuff, when we restarted the whole game. Oh, this is where you realized we hadn't lost all the audio. Right, exactly. Got it. So that's where this starts, and then we continue on the game. Mm Mm-hmm. So let's do it. Let's strap on our... Oh, boy. Where are you going with that sentence? Strap on our uh, our fantasy Birkenstocks. I don't know. Sure, I don't yeah, have any strap good them ma- on. I don't have a good Mad Lib. Yeah, this. we're going to strap those on, <laughs> and we're going to get going. Let's do it. Oh, for the recording, um, we found the footage. Yeah, we found the old audio from what we thought we lost but didn't lose. We could probably make clotted cream today. Oh, we need thank to you for remembering that. Yeah, let's put it in the oven. Start now. Let's do it. Because <laughs> uh, I was totally going to forget. I have a bunch of rotted bananas over here now. Well, are those red ones any better? I don't, I don't, I think they still need time. God, what the fuck? I don't know. <laughs> but the other ones are totally rotted now. I mean, they look better, I guess. They look redder. Those of you who have been listening this whole season and listening to our quest to find a better banana as well as make clotted cream, this is the next chapter of that. Mm -hmm. What did you say? This is chapter two? I guess. No, I think this is chapter three because chapter one was like we go looking for cream and then we just don't find it. Right. And then chapter two was we bought the cream, but then we forgot to put it in the oven. Uh Uh-huh. Here's chapter three where the cream is about a week old. This is the most exciting book ever written. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it is. So I have these things of cream. I'm gonna... Well, I think you're gonna set the oven to 180 degrees. Uh-huh. And here is the four-page story of how the person decided they wanted to make clotted cream. Exactly. And then started to make clotted cream and then put the clotted cream in the jar. And now here's how you do it. So Two I, pints I of heavy cream. A heavy, a heavy casserole dish. This is gonna work? Uh, I assume so. Pour the cream in the casserole dish. Clean it. It should come up about one to three inches on the side. Set the dish uncovered in the oven and leave undisturbed for 12 hours. Jesus! I do this overnight. We do this during the day while we play Final Fantasy. Yeah, and then we let it cool overnight. So theoretically, it's 11.17 right now in the Mm -hmm. morning. We're gonna play until 11.17 at night where we take it out of the oven. This cream feels like it's solid in here. 
Yeah, because it's been a week and because the milk is unpasteurized. Well, it's not unpasteurized. It's just not ultra pasteurized. It's regular pasteurized. One of the finer points of making clotted cream is yeah. you got to get the regular pasteurized. It can't be ultra pasteurized. But what I look in, everything inside the carton is solid. It kind of already became clotted cream inside right. of the carton. <laughs> it clotted itself. <laughs> Expire? No, it expires in a... Today's... What's today? The 22nd. Well, technically it did. God damn it. What the fuck? Because it's not ultra-pasteurized. Oh, but... But it's literally used by April 19th. Usually it goes past its used by... Or used by... Milk usually does. I don't know anything about heavy cream. Yeah. This doesn't seem liquid enough. Like, I yeah, can feel I... what's in there. Ugh. Do you think that you could just squeeze it out? Like, is it maybe... It doesn't smell bad, right? Oh. Is it just that viscous? I mean, I it used heavy whipping cream at Starbucks. It was not solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it shouldn't be. This one is solid, too. Yeah. I think we fucked up. Did we get it? So How did we fuck up? I think we waited too long. Two days? Yeah. Two days. Yeah. That's why you're gonna want that ultra-pasteurized. You need it ultra-pasteurized. Because it's turning into cheese over here. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, man. What? Fuck, man. <laughs> they might have the right thing at Gelson's. I didn't think it would start turning into cheese. Feel that. That's like goat cheese. Feel yeah. it. What the fuck? It's solid. Fuck. Completely solid. You think it's good? It tastes like so nothing. You really? <laughs> yeah. Alright, well I'm dumping this. Yeah. We just can't make this shit happen. Alright. So, where did we leave off? Because it's been a while. We went to the opera. That I remember. Like, that's like most of what I remember from this entire game. Is that we went to the opera and the octopus was there. And the octopus is a patron of the arts. If you're wondering what that weird noise is, that grinding noise, I believe Haley was chewing a toy up against the table that the microphone was on again. It shouldn't be going on for very long. Yeah, this is, because of our process, this is a thing we try to minimize, but... <laughs> but happens yeah. from time to time. All right, so we're level 19. I'm going to try one of these overripe bananas. The mini ones? Yeah. Yeah. But where are we going and what are we town. doing? Oh, right, we were about to explore this we town. We landed here at this town. And we were like, this here's is the, the next place. Oh boy. Because we needed an airship to infiltrate the Empire. Right. So now we have an airship that we can play around with. Yeah, and a couple of the nice things about it is, like, if you have the airship, you don't need to go to a town to sell items or buy basic items. Right. Like, you just always have it with you. If you want something to explore aimlessly for forever... Mm -hmm. You, you have can, that at your disposal. You can sleep disposal. on it, too. You can, you can on save it. there. <laughs> so I can go... This is our airship. Yeah. Go, oh, customers. Need any refreshment? It has a store. It has a store? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. I'm gonna cut open another red banana. Because it has been a whole week. They don't feel any right. It doesn't. It feel very hard. It feels like they still need more time. But, like, we can't know for sure. Should I get ourselves a warp stone? What does that even That's do? That's definitely still not right. <laughs> <laughs> it's a week later, still green on the inside. I don't know, man. Oh, and just licking it <laughs> makes my tongue, it's like poisonous. Anyway. Oh yeah, we have like a sweet blackjack table on our airship. Yep. This is the sickest airship. He's a gambler. This is amazing. Yeah, I forgot that you can explore the whole thing, and There's it's like, like a castle. shit to explore in the airship. Yeah, make airship great again. Make this airship is great, great airship. Again. This is 15, great airship. It's a car. Yeah, we have like a whole casino on the airship. We have like a whole casino, not just one. Yeah. <laughs> I think I asked this in a little bit, but like, who is the house? Yeah, I was gonna say, like, he has his own casino. Right. But who's he playing? But against? he's a gambler. He's right. not interested in making money from customers. There's like a roulette table. Yeah. He <laughs> and it's plays not staffed at it? by anybody either. So he no. just goes table to table and pretends plays to solitaire with himself. I yeah, I don't <laughs> like, know. <laughs> what was the voice we were doing for him? Was it the Don Pardo? What's going on? The Empire's been paranoid. Yeah, maybe we should. Maybe there's something because he's probably going to talk a lot. Yeah, we don't want the Don, Don Pardo. There's a reason Don Pardo is an announcer. <laughs> yeah, <you know> <laughs> so we start exploring the first town on the Empire's continent called Albrook, the yeah. Occupied 
town. The occupied city. Yeah, that's what that's what everyone says. And in one of the buildings, we meet a scholar. I'm a scholar of weapons. A hundred thousand years ago, during the War of the Magi, two so-called Atma weapons existed. Interesting. One changed a person's power into a sword. The other was in monster. <laughs> Bred for mass destruction. Okay. How do you breed for mass destruction? Is it like you see a little bit of mass destruction in one dog and another dog, and then you get those together, you keep, yeah, and then you, you keep, keep breeding, breeding for mass yeah. destruction, which is something that you see bits and bits of in each generation? Mm -hmm. I think so. Like, they did this crazy experiment to see what it would take to breed dogs into basically like a crazy bunch of pet wolves. They took the most aggressive 3% of a generation and bred those, and the most aggressive 3% of that generation. And in eight generations, they had, like, these super wolves that were, like, incredibly aggressive and refused to be around humans. And then they also did the opposite, where they took the most docile 3% and bred those. And within eight generations, you wind up with this thing that human beings inherently find cute. It's like the ears get floppier, the Are eyes get bigger. Foxes? This was dogs that they did this with. Oh, they did the same thing with foxes. I think they did the, the yeah, Soviet it, Union. Yes. And they very quickly ended up with like domesticated foxes and then also this batch of like foxes that you can't go near. Yeah. <laughs> that are like <laughs> Yeah. I think it's it's the same experiment, yeah. You'll find some good weapons and items in other towns. Zen and Miranda. Ooh, the music's getting louder. Here's a clock. Elixir in the clock. That's where I keep my elixirs. Oh, there's like a Ooh. bar back here. This is speakeasy? Yeah, this is... This is like the club. Ah, uh, whoopee! In any case, you're probably broke. Yeah, this is another brothel. So it's not explicitly called this in the game, but this is like a club with dancing girls and girls serving soldiers. Like, you, we know what's going on. Right. It, this seems to be a common thing in JRPGs. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, so far... There's always a brothel. Final Fantasy IV had one. Right. And now this one has, has it, too. And I feel like there's others where it's like, there's dancing girls in a back room, and you're like, hmm... Yeah. Hmm. It's just a bunch of women catering to the this soldiers. The occupying soldiers, yeah. This is like some GI stuff going on. Like, yeah. They're, they're guys... just trying to survive during wartime, you know? <laughs> what are those guys up there talking about? I don't know, but get out of the way! Yeah, this game's fun. The fighting's good. <laughs> Something valuable in the east. The Empire built a base there. No one may enter. Got it. The real thing that comes out of Albrook is that we realize, like, there's a facility that the government's using, and the, the, the Empire, I mean. Yeah, the government. <laughs> Uncle Sam is using your, he's funneling your taxpayer money into Magisite research. <laughs> Open your eyes, man. But, yeah, there. we get directions to Vector, which is, like, the industrialized nightmare city that is, like, the seat of the Empire. Yeah. Haley, chill. So we go into the inn. It's on the house. Have a snooze. It's on the Sounds house. like a fucking trap to me. Yeah. I guess not. It's just a nice free inn. What the fuck? What are they doing in there? <laughs> Hi. In the inn, there's like two people who are just laying in a bed talking <laughs> yeah. to each other. Yeah, there's a couple having like pillow <laughs> having the worst pillow talk of all time. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, well, I guess I'll just let my destiny be completely decided for me. <laughs> <laughs> and we walk in and get in on this conversation. Mm -hmm. Guess I'll stay here and volunteer to be a soldier. <laughs> oh, is that what he's telling this lady? In the army that destroyed our village? What about your promise to begin anew in Miranda? This is some interesting pillow talk. Yeah. Well, now that the Nazis are here, I should probably join with that's, them, right? Yeah, that's exactly... Like, this guy's like, I mean, I guess I'm going to become a Nazi. And she's like, I thought you didn't want... Like, they killed your family. And he's like, yeah, but I mean, now things are... Now... Now, now they're uh, here. Yeah. Guess well, I'll join this evil empire. Fucking weird, dude. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of house is this? We walk into a building that is the width of a doorway. Yeah, this is a house that's like if you built a house around a closet. Yeah, like, like I don't think it <laughs> even qualifies as a shack. Yeah, it's like, just like a tiny room, but you built the outside of it to look like a house. And there's a weird guy in here asking us about the Empire. Pledge your allegiance to the Empire. What do I do? I don't, I don't know. Uh-oh. We say we don't support the Empire. Yeah, we start by saying no. P people appear out of the walls to attack us. They came out of the walls of the closet. 
It's just a trap house where an old woman sits in there and says, like, how loyal are you to anyone who... Everyone walking by is like, what could this house possibly be? Yeah. <laughs> and then it's like a KGB interrogation room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Young people, hang in there. Wait, now does it heal you? What is happening? What... <laughs> What does happen? I, I think in that here? I think that we like. She asked us, "Are you loyal to the empire?" We said no and beat the shit out of the empire people. And then she was like, "Go you." Yeah, like now, the test was actually now I'll like, heal you. I'm not loyal to the empire either, but I was just pretending to work for them so that yeah. actually I could work for you. I think basically so. she's I think you someone just who's it. like whoever wins the fight. I have to be on their side. Yeah, so and, I'm going to stay neutral gonna, before. I'm going to retroactively <laughs> claim I was on their side. Exactly. Always. You know, yeah. she's probably in like a double agent loop where yes. she's always <laughs> claiming to be like I was just being a double agent for the other side. Anyway, that's what's going on in this house. <laughs> Sid, the director of Magitech research, is a genius. Sid, he's here. He gave my child the gift of cure magic. Yeah. Now oh. he's running around yelling cure. Oh, yes, this part's gonna be great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that guy Kefka, he was Sid's first experimental Magitech knight. Oh, shit. But the process wasn't perfected yet. Something in Kefka's mind snapped that day. Mm, that makes sense. So I hope they perfected that process. Right. Because that kid outside has cure magic. Right. <laughs> I wonder if his mom's like, he, my son has the gift of cure magic. But he's just never been the same. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it claims that he, Sid has perfected it after Kefka, but I, yeah, I, I wouldn't so. totally trust it. So wait, Celeste is a product of genetic engineering. He's trying to genetically engineer magic, magic people. Magic people, yeah. He did it to Kefka and made him evil strong. Yeah, Kefka like went insane with magic. Shh, I'm a returner sympathizer. I've heard of you. So in this weird industrial town, we find a guy who's standing near a guarded area. He's like, I'll distract the guards while you jump on this box. Okay. And then you can go infiltrate in this way. Yeah, got it. Okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. This guy's a returner sympathizer, and he's like telling us to jump on the rafters. Yeah, like in every single action movie, like in any Marvel movie, there's going to be a part where somebody's like, okay, for this part of the plan, you're going to like infiltrate, I'll distract the guards. Right. And it usually varies from like two idiots pretending to be janitors or something. Right, like, yeah. We're clueless to like a girl being like, I'm sexy, and this guy's plan is my favorite. Because he walks in front of the guards and he's like, hey guys, check it out, and just starts like throwing up on the ground. <laughs> is that what he I thought yeah. he dances weird. No, he runs up to him and he's like, I'm going to be sick, and, and he just starts puking. <laughs> what is he doing? I, I, I'm going to be sick. Get out of here. It's a classic. I came one. over to you just to vomit. If, like, let's say I went to see the next Ant-Man or whatever, uh. and Paul Rudd walked in front of a couple guards and just started, like, violently <laughs> throwing up on their shoes. <laughs> and then he's, like, <laughs> signaling to somebody, like, go, go yeah, now, exactly. go now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna toss it. all. Oh, hey, hey, back I up. I want to say that next time I'm about to throw up. I'm, I'm gonna toss it all. Like, just... <laughs> <laughs> I've heard the phrase tossing your cookies. Yeah. It's a railroad to nowhere. So he pukes all over the floor. Yeah, the vomit plan works like a charm. Uh, <laughs> we sneak on by and enter the Magitech Research Facility, which is a big old dungeon. Yeah, it's a big one with a lot of moving sidewalks and uh, hooks that go around to places and it's elevators that only go in one direction. Got a real, it's a whole factory. Oh boy. That's the music of a factory, all right. Yep, yeah, that's. Classic factory music, a lot of clanging. A rhythm that you go every time you hear it, you're like, nobody really likes this rhythm. <laughs> it's the kind of rhythm that whatever would be in like the Matrix Reloaded. Whatever the in Zion can do to it, there's like a pause. Right, the yes, yes. In the future, they party weird. Well, we got ourselves a dungeon, dude. Yep. Yeah, it's probably not healthy to work in the magic factory. Yeah, what kind of magic radiation do you think? Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, like, just like factory workers in Flint, Michigan or whatever. It's just like really bad. Can you imagine if it was the magic factory? Like Karen Silkwood. So at, like, the entrance to this dungeon, there's a section that you can't walk out of unless you recognize that tubes are a thing you can walk through. In See, there's a middle part. Can there. you hit anything? Which middle part? Like, just in between those two gears, the one that's spinning and the one that's not. No? Okay. 
This is, I think, like a graphical failure yeah. here, because these tubes like don't stand out from the background enough. No, and we spend a while before we realize you could walk through them. And one thing that I thought was really funny was my brother was playing this game like in the process of us editing this, mm -hmm. so we had already played it, and I got a text from him going like, I think I entered the Magitech research facility, but I'm not sure what to do or where to go, and I was instantly like, those are tubes you can walk the through. Tubes, the those tubes. are tubes. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, whoa, interesting. What the? Oh, wait a minute. Try to, yeah, climb up. Yeah, there what we go. What the fuck? Yeah, we figure out the tubes, and there's two of them right next to each other, and one of them clearly leads to a chest, and the other one leads forward, and I go through the wrong one. You go forward. I hate doing that. Oh, boy. No, wait. Take me back, because uh, now I know how to get to the fucking chest. Uh, God damn it! Uh, oh. Do you ever remember... At like Discovery Zone or those like playground parks, yes. there would be slides that were made out of like rollers. Yeah, like, yeah, I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. This place is filled with those roller slides. Where did, what happened to those? They always felt dangerous to me. Like right. every time I got on one, I was so afraid that my fingers would just like right. go into like <laughs> exactly. in between the rollers. There must have been clothes that got caught all the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's probably just the thing. Like most playgrounds are just at parks. Nobody's going to be like, actively maintaining it. I bet that right. slide breaks all the time. Sometimes, whereas Probably most more often slides than just like your regular break. slide that's <laughs> yeah. just gonna like... It's just a sheet of metal. Yeah. <laughs> the worst thing that's gonna do is like skin your ass. Mm -hmm. I never thought of this before, but it must have been really hard to find an employee who would just be the person who maintains those tubes at Discovery Zone. You're that saying would like... stay on and like, like do... At night, the cleaning crew has like to crawl every, through yeah, no, the playground in every, order to... Every night, you've got to send people into the tubes. <laughs> They've got to crawl through so the like kids' So, like, a part of your job like description, it. if you work there, must be you got to go in the tubes. <laughs> to, at the very least, make sure there's not, like, backpacks and shit oh, you're totally right. in there. So, like, every night after you've worked all day at this place for, like, probably not very good money, I imagine... <laughs> You gotta crawl through you the tubes crawl yourself. Crawl through all of the tubes and like go in the ball pit <laughs> and like probably have like a Windex and a rag. Exactly. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, once you get onto one of the roller slides, it takes you, you know, around to like a new location. Yeah, it's a yeah. full conveyor belt that you can't get off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there we go. Uh huh. Another thing about this place is we're finding the enemies really tough. It's way harder than earlier parts of the game. Oh my god, that was actually scary for a second there, too. Oh, I wasn't even paying attention. Look at the hit yeah. points on everybody. <laughs> we've been trying to like maintain our level. Like, we've been doing a good job, but like, I guess like coming to this new continent they expected maybe we would grind a little bit more and we haven't they I don't want know. you to go for your walks in the woods you know yeah, you got to get out there for your health okay maybe we need to focus up <laughs> we're gonna run out of potions do we still have tannics we might not have any tonics holy Whoa! fuck can't bolt two you're out, you don't have enough magic. It takes 22 magic points yeah, to do Yeah, but I it. thought that I still had like 100 something. No, you have 19. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> this place is just so big. The fuck, dude? This Oh, man. I like hate it. It's so. There's so much of it. I mean, I love it. But it's just like, oh, my brain can't m maze this out. After a lot of wandering around this place, picking up chests, you know the deal, mm -hmm. fighting fights, endless random encounters, mm -hmm. we finally reach, I guess, the end of the dungeon of sorts. It's kind of like a midpoint, but we get to like a cut scene in the dungeon. And Kefka's here, fucking he's, around he's with a like bunch of espers. He's like disposing of the bodies of two espers. <laughs> <laughs> he's like throwing them in a garbage chute. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, I think this must be the right oh. way. There he is. There's oh Kefka. boy. I'm all powerful. Oh, yeah. Hee hee ha. <laughs> I'm collecting espers. I'm extracting magic. I'll restore the statues. You don't know who I am, but I know where you live. <laughs> You've been completely drained of your powers. Now you're useless to me. Just a husk of a human. Yeah, treat you like trash now. And you take a hike. He's just throwing espers in the garbage. Wow. 
this is irresponsible. And I mean, I know he's like, these espers are no use to me anymore. Right. But like, you make sure a match is out completely before you throw it in the trash can. You know, <laughs> right. You even maybe dunk it in some water. Because these are still a little bit alive. Yeah. You don't know what could happen if they're still alive when you throw out your esper. Mm hmm. He finds it hilarious, too. He went crazy with magic. He went crazy with magic. Now I follow him. Yeah, let's go surprise him. By taking this elevator? Rather than going down the trash chute? We've been up here? I think so. Yeah, because I, I know. Oh, fuck. God damn it. What? You can't go back down the elevator. Yeah. So, so now I've got to go all the way around in the dungeon back to where I was, which is like a circular route. Yeah, instead of going down the trash chute after the espers, we accidentally sort of step on this elevator that we essentially takes you back to the beginning of the yeah. dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Up in the garbage. Yeah, go in the trash. The body chute. Not up that fucking elevator, which I almost did again. Out of instinct. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> I would have been like, you're clearly not, you can't play right now. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Taking it away from you. At the bottom of the garbage chute, we go to check on the espers. Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's a dead esper. That's a. Oh. Whoa. Oh. This one's not dead. I guess we pick a fight with Ifrit. I don't know. I guess it's like you approach an injured animal or right. something, and it sort of lashes out. Yeah. If you don't know these games, Ifrit is like a prototypical devil guy. Yeah, he's, he's like, like a hell he's beast. got big horns and like hooves, and he does fire. He's got like fire coming out of his chest and parts. Yeah. He's usually partly on fire. Mm -hmm. Anyway, Ifrit throws a shit fit. <laughs> Ifrit. Ooh. Oh shit. Body slam. Use ice. Ice? Oh yeah. Ice to beat you. Chainsaw is super effective against everything. Yeah, I like <laughs> it a lot. It's a great weapon. Oh shit, who are you? The other dead esper, Shiva, joins the fight, and we're like, oh fuck, but then the fight's over very quickly. Yeah, this is one of those, like, just for story fights. Right. You have Ramu's power? Oh wait, let's use espers? I think that was, you started fighting, and then they were like, wait a minute, I remember who I am now. Oh, and Shiva's, okay. Well, Ramu did entrust them with his power. So now you guys are my friends? And then the espers decide that, like, what would be best, actually, would be if they willingly ended themselves and turned themselves into magicite that we can use. <laughs> it's exactly what happened. <laughs> we haven't long to live. So in the middle of figuring out this shit with Shiva and Ifrit, we get into a big battle with a bunch of flan. Flan! And there's, there's flans. Like, you kill one, and then two more fall from the ceiling, and then, like, three more. It's like they continually fall on you. It's endless flan. Oh, no. Oh, there's more flan. Oh, this is what happens with flan. Right, there's more flan. <laughs> you, kill, you think you killed flan. <laughs> you know, there's, in Final Fantasy XII, there's that room you walk into, and oh, they just yeah. don't stop falling from the ceiling. I'm not positive about this, but I think this kind of encounter with flan might be a recurring thing in these games. We haven't seen it up until now, but you and I have played a game that includes that for sure. Yeah, so I think we should this is like I'm putting a pin on this <laughs> for years from now. Yeah. We might refer back to this and really? say this is a recurring motif huh, in the Final Fantasy rooms. games is yeah. the flans falling from the ceiling onto the characters. <laughs> we will see. I don't know for sure, but like I have... We'll find out. <laughs> it's just like, an insane oh, amount of flans. Yeah. Too much flan. Too much flan. I'm Luckily, sure plenty of people have said that before. They're like, oh, no, uh, too much too flan. Much flan. Yeah. flan? However you want to do it. Gestal has grabbed our friends and is trying to drain them of their power. I too suffered my turn in one of those glass tubes. We will follow Ramu's lead and give you our power. Nice. Yeah. Nice! Our friends are all gone. We haven't much time left. No choice but to entrust you with our essences. Shiva and Ifrit turn into crystals. The Magitech research facility is really like a crystal buffet. Yeah, it, yeah. You just get so, so much magicite Yeah, here. well, Ifrit says something about, or Shiva, one of the two, it, where they're like, I too spent time in those glass tubes, mm -hmm. and so we've got to go find these glass tubes. Yeah. Put an end to it, right? Yeah. Save room? Save yes. room. There it is. Yes! Oh, that was what I needed. Magitech Research Facility, here's the glass tubes. 
So we get to like a Magitek Knight guy mm-hmm. who's got like, you know, he's like a crazy Final Fantasy design where he's like right. part man, part holy machine, right. from like a Renaissance painting. <laughs> Holding two swords yeah. and casting magic. Yeah, with some kind of like headboard behind, like attached to his back. Yeah, he's a weird guy. <laughs> part bed, part magic, part sword. Like. <laughs> weird that he has two swords when he's casting magic the whole time. But they might be like magic conduit swords. Yeah, you know? yeah, he's yeah. like got metal and all kinds of Final One Fantasy. Of them is he's like part and... Esper, you know? He's like, they look like swords to us, but that's because our minds can't even comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that kind of thing. It's like the universal translator of your brain has to make sense of what you're seeing. Yeah, so exactly. it, it makes it into a full a sword. So we walk into a room full of glass tubes with espers floating in them. Mm-hmm. It's some kind of like terrible science magic. Yeah, it looks a lot like the most stereotypical sci-fi movie like that would have this. Frankenstein's lab, uh, almost. You know what it reminds me of is that Alien Encounters ride at Disneyland. <laughs> That you like sit in a room. This yeah, is yeah. doesn't even exist anymore. This is like a touchstone for I don't know how what percent of the population remembers this stupid shit. Uh-huh. But you sit in a room around a big glass tube, and they put an alien in it, and it breaks out, and then they just make the room dark and sound effects play. Is that one of those things where they have like stuff under your seat where yeah, there's like a like, tube they, that like, comes make out? It feel like it like breathes on Bru- your neck, yeah, and yeah, then, like yeah. your feet get like it's scurrying underneath uh-huh. your feet, and the, like they're like you, tickling it feels your feet, like it's flying around the room. Yeah, so there's like a wing beating. I thought thing. I did that in experience with that. That was like Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Well, the, they had that in Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. This is different. Okay. It was like a circular theater. Uh-huh. It had similar technology, let's say, because they do like the mice under your chair in Honey, I Shrunk the Audience. Right. But this okay, was like yeah. you get in a big circular theater that's around the glass tube. Okay. And, and then it bra- yeah, I get they're going to teleport like a cute alien into this thing, but mm-hmm. like something messes up and they bring like a scary <laughs> alien. Anyway, they, so turned picture it, that. they turned it into a Lilo and Stitch ride. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, they switched it to Lilo and Stitch. I don't even know if it exists anymore. <laughs> if the Lilo made, and Stitch made, ride is still there, that would be it, great. They made it so that instead of a scary alien, it's like Stitch. And he gets... Because, you know, Stitch can be like a big monster. Right. So right. Stitch breaks out, and then Stitch is loose in the theater. Sure. Why not? Yeah. So picture that what when a, you're never mind. here now in the Magitech <laughs> Research Facility. Whoa. Oh, yeah, it was like I spent time in his crazy glass jars... There's a whale. There's a whale. There's a horse. Pony. And then a uh, frog. Uh, some kind Gap-tooth of cat frog. Maybe? frog. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that the is. The purple hair. Who is that on the bottom right? Bottom right? Yeah. I don't know. Because that's that seems to be like an elf-looking motherfucker. Interestingly, this elf-looking motherfucker is super important. I would be like, remember what he looks like, but this is an audio podcast. You want to help me, but I haven't long to live. Just as Ifrit did before me, I'll give you my power and turn into a crystal. Oh, I remember this. We're about to have way too many espers, and just half, it's like, what are we going to do with all this espers? <laughs> Sid! <laughs> What are you doing that what's what's Sid's voice gonna be? How much Paul McCartney can people handle? More than they can handle the Saturday Night Live. Live more, thing, more than Don sure. Pardo? Yeah. Well, the thing that I want to make clear for the audience is that the Paul McCartney impression isn't an impression of Paul McCartney. It's an impression of Dana Carvey doing an impression of Paul McCartney. So it's... It's real bad. <laughs> you just keep doing this, you know? Then you, you you keep what's this? It's it's really it, and it comes and goes too. It's not going to be consistent at all. I feel like mine's going to be. <clears throat> I watched this documentary documentary that was supposed to be like a tape of George Harrison on his deathbed explaining that Paul McCartney is like a replacement Paul McCartney. Wait, what? And the real Paul McCartney died like early on in his <laughs> career. Is this actual footage of George saying this? No. Okay. It's wait, like yeah. still images with a guy oh, and with a guy's voice going like and then we were <laughs> 
it's like the British government came to us and said we had to get a false pool. <laughs> this sounds like a sketch. It's amazing. It I used to great. just like it's so stoned and just like watch this movie. <laughs> it's like on Netflix. It's so funny. It's just like so terrible. I was like, how can you make this? It's it's just like false. Right. It's just not true it's at made all. Up. Yeah. What's this? <laughs> <laughs> so Sid shows up mm-hmm. wearing uh, something weird. Yeah, it's like he's covered in like yellow rubber. Yeah, he's got a he's, got a, he's got a fetish suit on. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, as we said, the Magitech research facility has some kind of weird radiation, mm-hmm. so I'm sure that this suit somehow blocks it. Yeah, they've all turned into crystals. Look at this little like yellow hazmat suit thing. Oh, yeah, it's, it's like, like a, it's like a raincoat. I don't know really. It's like rubber. It's also kind of funny because like you, this is the first time we're running into this character but like having played the other two I, you kind of feel like you know sid already right. for some reason there's definitely like <laughs> pre-existing sid i know him as the airship guy. yeah it's like that that connection somehow carries over even yeah. though this is a totally different guy well because nothing else carries over from final fantasy to final fantasy yeah. so like anytime you see something that you recognize you're like fuck yeah that's true that's totally what it is it's like that simple <laughs> recognition i'm actually playing a final fantasy game and not just something else yeah. that is kind of similar not some off-brand whatever. Something that doesn't include a guy named Sid. Yeah. But is the same <laughs> basic thing. So, Esper magical power can only truly be transferred when one of them passes away? Yeah, that's per. Yeah, I think that's... Oh, there really are going to be... We're overloaded with that. <laughs> yeah. Words. You weren't kidding. Yeah, six magicite crystals, which is what the espers turn into, mm-hmm. like, converge on you, and you just, like, pick them all up at once. Receive magicite. Looking at this through our lens, you see that, and you're like, that's a lot of grinding. Yeah, exactly. Like, everyone's got to have to learn all those spells. Exactly. <laughs> Can it be true that you came here as a spy seeking... To cause an uprising. <laughs> it's becoming like Irish. Yeah, it's it's gonna constantly be changing. What is this exchange? I think <laughs> Locke, yeah, one person says exclamation point question mark, and the other person's dialogue in response is ellipses <laughs> question mark. This little story turn is something that is sort of confusing to me. Which is for some reason there's like a misunderstanding about Celeste's intentions. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, like because she's a general of the Empire, we're very sure that she's gonna flip on us at any minute. Which wasn't really present before. Like everyone's been like, oh good, Celeste is here, and then suddenly there's this question about her loyalty well, I think, and like, then she Locke disappears. Locke is like Celeste is cool, she's with me don't worry about it and mm-hmm. everybody else is going like, are we sure about that? She was a general for the That's Empire true. and Locke's going we are sure, mm-hmm. she reminds me of my past. But uh, what I'm saying here is that she does nothing to convince us she's not on our side and then leaves anyway and then everyone is like not sure if she flipped or not. Well yeah, because you're right, this scene <laughs> in particular is weird because Kefka shows up and indicates that she is a bad bad guy Mm -hmm. and she yeah she doesn't do a very good job of making it not she she could just say no i'm not actually i'm on their side and instead she kind of like goes with him in a way yeah wavers it could be clearer to the returners how she feels here Mm -hmm. but it seems like it might be a betrayal yeah general solace the game's over bring me those magicite shards it sort of reminds me of the clumsiness of Palum and Porum in the last one right. of like the weird talk around are they spying on us or right, not. Right, right. I bet you that there's something lost in translation here. Yeah. Because I think I also read something about how originally Celeste, when she meets Terra and they go up to like fight Kefka the first time on top mm-hmm. of the mountain, originally the line was, oh, Terra, I wasn't expecting to see you, the magic person who I know yeah, from yeah, there. Yeah, that's a good point. And in translation, it was changed to the opposite where she's like oh you have magic yeah, too they t- oh man that's yeah. so weird I didn't yeah. think about how weird that is they would they've been working together right. for years right they're two of the magic people what? from the empire wow. why would they change that I think it, there was some mistake somewhere in the translation yeah, this is yeah. why Ted Wolves is a controversial figure oh yeah <laughs> it's things like this <laughs> Celeste you deceived me of course not have a little faith <laughs> She has tricked you all. Celeste, that's so you. (laughs) Locke, please believe me. Don't know whether to believe you or the evil person in the game. 
exterminate all of them. See, Dale is an exterminator. He is. Oh man, we just got steamrolled. They do have better technology. Look, though. let me protect you for once. Maybe now, now you'll believe me. I wasn't really tracking this lock, believing or not her. Celeste. Celeste. What, what, what are you doing? Stop it. Whoa, she's making the world pixelate. She's like magic, magic thing. Yeah, Celeste like steps up to the plate to prove herself. And she and Kefka fly upward. She or? like levitates all of the bad guys it, out of the room. It's really weird. And we're all left confused in the Magitech research mm-hmm. facility. Is that an alien next to us? What Where, is that? What are you talking about? This. That's Edgar lying on his That's face. That's Edgar lying on his face. It looks yeah. to me like <laughs> oh, I green see what, eyes, I see what you're saying. right? Like a, like a mouth. In a, yeah, yeah. Just, what, yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's... <laughs> <laughs> this is a disaster! Your fighting has caused the capsules to rupture! Their contents are spilling out! Quick, over here! Kafka has used me! Used the Empire! And what have I done? <laughs> Sid is always being used for the bad shit. You've helped me come to a decision. I'm going to talk to the Emperor and have this stupid war stopped. That's all it would have taken? We'll see. He's just going to go and be like, I'll tell him to stop it. See, it's like the people who are making technology, they're always like, I can't believe my technology was used by people who have aspirations for power. I just uh, can't believe it happened. It's so weird. (laughs) It's so weird that that happened, right? Yeah. Like, who would have thought? Well, I, that's why, like, I really do have so much love for Sergei Korolev, the guy who did the Russian space program in the 60s. Is like, he knew that in order to go to the moon and go into space, he had to build weapons. So he built the first ICBM as a rocket that sucked for hitting the America with nukes and was great for sending satellites into space. Man, any excuse to talk about the Russian space program <laughs> and I'm off and running. Like this was the littlest I, excuse. I know, it was like you got like the slightest bit of traction on that <laughs> runway and you were just like, Whoa. Yeah, fl- 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 me like here's it. my lecture, like just like bam. We haven't said before, but I'm obsessed with the history of the Soviet space program, especially in the 60s and there's so much to it. There's so much to unpack. I've written three screenplays about this it. This is our way to backdoor you into Welcome to our yeah. uh, 60s Soviet space, space program yeah. thing. I could totally have a segment where I tell an insane story from the Soviet space program once an episode. We don't have to do it every episode. Yeah, maybe not every episode. But that is a thing <laughs> that I would like to do, even though it has nothing to do with anything. Because it's fascinating. Well, it's already happening here. It's a crazy... St- <laughs> yeah, fuck. And he was like, you know, if we, instead of putting a heavy warhead on top of that, we put like a light satellite, we can go into space. And they were like... All right, because you gave us the ICBM, we'll let you do it. Because we don't give a shit about this. And then Sputnik launched, and Khrushchev saw the New York Times headlines about Sputnik and was like, okay, you're Mr. Space Race now. Yeah. Forget these weapons. <laughs> and he managed to, like, turn it around on itself in a way that, like, most people never do. Anyway. Celeste, I've known her since she was a baby. <laughs> I raised her as if she was my own daughter. But she was just a girl. She was she was forced <laughs> to become a Magitech knight and has done many awful things. It's going to take me a while to get a handle on it. <laughs> if I could only talk to her, I'd apologize for the way her life has turned out. Well, you can't talk to her because she flew away or something. It's Kefka. Go. Go. So with Sid, like, laying out his guilt for everything he's done... Right, which he's only realizing now. I know, I was gonna... Over the years, this didn't occur to him at any well, point. Well, maybe this is a situation where it's like, what's that Oppenheimer quote about, I have become destroyer of worlds, or, like, what is that quote? Uh, now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. He said on seeing his creation, the atomic bomb. Right, but he did he say that in a, like, I regret everything, or did he say that? I always felt like he was like... Oh, Oh. I am transcendent, like, not not with, like, a good or bad connotation necessarily that he regrets it, but that he's, like, stepped above. Interesting. I only ever read it as him being like, I have become death. Like, fuck me. I think it's just a statement of fact. 
Sid is regretting not just what he's done with magic. He's regretting, like, not being there for people. This is, like, a thing that's running through his whole life right now. Like, it's just occurred to him <laughs> that every single thing he should have done different. Right. So what he's going to do right this time is send us on a, a minecart ride. Right. We're getting on a minecart, <laughs> and he's going to go tell the emperor to stop. I guess he has the ear of the emperor, and he can just go say, like, hey, maybe we shouldn't have this war that you've fully invested in. I was wondering if there were any carts with all those tracks around. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Yeah, we get on the minecart, and the Super Nintendo tries some shit. Yeah, this minecart ride is, like, in first person, going down a... 3D hallway kind it's of? It's more like a bunch of 2D images that keep like showing up and coming at you and then repeating and coming at you. It really looks like a like almost formed reality. Like right. you're in like a broken <laughs> sort of repeating yeah. seizure scape is what I would call it. A seizure scape. I love that. <laughs> There's random encounters in here. <laughs> is that what that was? A magic rotor? His hands are wheels? Is he on the cart with us? Like, he's at least chasing us or in front of us or something. I don't know. It looked like he was in front of us. This is what insane. What the fuck am I looking at? Oh my god. Can you go? Could you have gone on I that other know. track? I don't know. Graphics have come a long way. Yeah. Right now, it makes me feel like I'm like missing my glasses or something. Exactly. Like, yeah, like, yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> or I'm like in a dream and I can like almost see. There was a time where, especially in the N64, like there was, I would play games that I knew this older guy, and he would look at the TV and be like, "This is, makes me want to throw up," and I'd be like, "What do you mean? <laughs> like I don't even understand." And now, as an adult, I look at that and go, "Yeah, if you had never played video games and you weren't a kid, and then you were looking at You're this, like, you'd what, be like, uh, what am I? Ah, uh, make know. it stop.' I don't know if I could control that or not. I tried, but I think I might have been too late. Just the idea that you would right. have to discern anything in this view as and figure coming. out yeah. what, oh, just, like make it stop. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay." The mine shaft goes on for, one might say, a little too long, mm -hmm. and eventually we run into a boss. Number 128. Yeah, this is number 128. Right, all of the monsters in the facility have, like, different numbers, I think, because it's like, you know how Preparation H was named? <laughs> It's like that, and we're at number 128. I mean, also funny, to, in the way they maintain this facility, I guess throwing espers in the trash is normal, because this place is, like, sort of overrun with failed experiments. Right. Like, this is <laughs> number 128, nah, not what we were looking for. Right. Just set it loose. Set it loose <laughs> and use it as, like, a security system? I, yeah, I guess. But I want to steal... It seems like it's really hard to steal from this place. I know, but there's always a thing in these games that I never do, and everyone's like, if you manage to steal from this boss, it's the only way to get this item, uh -huh. and I never do it. Mm, I like and it now that we're stealing, I'm like, I'm gonna Let's, steal yeah, from everybody. <laughs> one day, I'm one like, time I'm in like, my life, I'm, I'm like dead them. set on it. Yeah. Come on. Not, not your finest moment. It's... You're, you're, you're all right. I'm just saying, like, you know... Yeah, it hasn't been a perfect fight. It's just fight. like, it's hard to, for whatever reason, it's hard to get these, God, I feel like we're breaking the controller by doing blitz inputs, like it's getting worse. <laughs> well, I didn't manage to steal from him, but I did try. You did, did. try. I mean, RNG Jesus, you know? Yeah. He likes to support your stealing habits. That's what Jesus was about. That was his main thing. Take from the poor. He was like, like take, take from, from the rich. The, rob, rob take from, from everybody. everybody. <laughs> Fuck them all. <laughs> Give to your disciples. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Keep the homeboys fed. Exactly. <laughs> they got your back. But the thing with Jesus, though, uh -huh. everyone gets to be a homeboy if they want. <laughs> if, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the whole sell of it. We must have an insane amount of cash. Yeah. What's up with Celeste? Locke is silent. She magicked away. It's unclear where she the last Yeah, where is she? She flew. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk later. Let's, let's get, get out of here. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Crud, what a mess. I don't think so. You won't get away. I'm hitting the self-destruct button. Or wait, what the fuck? 
Kefka sees that we're about to get away on the airship, and so he sends out his cranes that are attached to the building to grab on. <laughs> I can't think of what you would use these for other than this. They're at the top of a tower, yeah. two giant claw machine games. That go to, like, <clears throat> grab upward. Yeah. They're like four grabbing low-flying aircraft. Yeah, I mean, I guess uh, we'd never see this, but in my head, I imagine maybe he could use the town like its own claw machine. Oh. Like, he could just suspend them over the town and be like, <laughs> you. <laughs> now you live here. <laughs> like, it's a Sim City, yeah. but, like, the claws are from some <laughs> giant castle. They could be used for that, I that's, guess. That's a great idea. But we have no evidence to suggest that that's what they're for. No. I had these cranes installed. Let's What's not that? overstay our visit. We gotta get out of here on the double. Right. Speaking of which, maybe we should be leaving. That's that's what he Does said. Does the translator change at this part? Yeah, honestly, like that definitely happens. Yeah. That definitely, definitely happens. Something horrible. Something horrible's coming. Something horrible's coming. Okay, yeah. He's gotta yeah. keep that voice. Definitely. I feel like today will be the day where we drop or keep voices. I think we should keep them. <laughs> yeah, I know, but some of them it's like... Some of them, them gotta be fit, toned some down. Some of them, yeah. Oh, yes, and now we have Setzer. Oh, damn. So we're gonna fight the cranes that are at the top of the building has from our airship? He has nothing equipped? Yeah, because we've never put, we've picked him up. We didn't use him. We unequipped everything from but everybody. This... So Setzer's special ability is that he can, like, play a slot machine. Right. right. Slot which pays out with various attacks and buffs. <laughs> but, what kind of a slot machine But it is only this? pays out if you line up. I'll give it this. It's easier than real slot machines to mm -hmm. win. Right. Like, you can time it correctly. <laughs> I'll also say this. I never feel like playing the slot machine when I have to, like, win a fight. <laughs> like, going, like, I'm, okay, I hope I get bar, 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 because that's the <laughs> attack I want to do. Slot machines, like in real life, suck. Yeah. What is this? This is Setzer's thing. Whoa. He gambles. Right. He gambles in the fight. That's great. It's the worst odds in the casino. It's unfortunate because I like Setzer's weapons and stuff, but I end up not using him very much because I just like, I never want to rely on this slot machine thing. Yeah. Well, well we get our fixed dice. Mm -hmm. That's more fun. Yeah. So right now, are the cranes holding onto the airship? Or I is think the, the cranes airship... grabbed the side of the airship. Okay. So we, okay. I think, I don't know totally. Honest. And the cranes are not just holding on to us, but also casting magic on us. Yes. Magic cranes. And we're, they're not cranes the bird. Yes, they're all diamonds. actual cranes. Oh, sweet. You fucked those cranes right up. Got four magic points. Whoa! Whoa! See, now we're flying. This always really fucks with me. I'm Whoa. worried about Terra. Let's return to Zozo. He's like, what are we doing? He's like, I don't know who any of you are. <laughs> Setzer's like, whoa, what have I gotten involved in? Yeah, I was about to go kidnap a girl and get married, and now I'm doing this? Yeah, he's like, we, we broke into a magic thing. We're stealing the souls of demons from another world? What's, someone explain this yeah. to me. I'll explain on the way. Uh, see, you know what's great about this? It's, yeah. This is him going, I'll tell you about it as we go. Yeah. The audience doesn't need to hear this. Again. I'll tell you about Terra Espers and the Returners. A merciful cut. And that's episode 10. We're further in this game than we've ever been before. That's true. We're, we are further. We're further than we were last week, and even the week before that, if you yeah, can believe it. If you could believe that, <laughs> which we often can't say. Yeah, we're heading back to Zoso. Uh, right. So next week we'll learn some exciting backstory about yeah. the entire world. We're getting more flashbacks, but this time it's like the flashback. Yeah, th you're right. This is the flashback. Coming right. Up. This is the key that unlocks the world. Right. So Magitech Research Facility has been destroyed? Was it destroyed? Mm, I mean, like, we took all of the research material right. away, right. so... <laughs> we did the corporate I espionage it's, move. It's still standing, but it's just, you know, what, what, there's nothing to research. But the cranes are broken, the so Kefka's crane, going well, the there, like, broken, we yeah. broke his SimCity game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now we flew back to Zozo to talk to Terra again. Mm -hmm. That's next week. Oh, let's do the billboard segment. Yeah. I, I'm told that we have a billboard in the Magitech research facility. Yeah, let's see what's going on there. Oh my god, send help! 
God, please, we've been in here for days. There's conveyor belts just go everywhere, and I can't get off. I mean, I there's know. just more conveyor belts, and the, I don't know where I am. The elevators here only go up. Is that a tube you can walk through? I know, and it doesn't seem like anybody works here, except for monsters and, like, s sentient motorcycles. I can't find the billboard. We, yeah, we haven't found the billboard. We just are trying to find a way out. That music is terrible. That factory uh, music sucks. It's like 80s David Bowie. Nobody can dance to this. <laughs> Let's just get the fuck out of here. I wish we could. So that's the billboard this week. Billboards cost $50. Just email nocatpodcast at gmail.com with the subject line billboards, and we will make it happen. Please rate and review us on iTunes. Find us at noonecannowaboutthis.com or at nocatpodcast on Facebook and Twitter. That's N O C. C-K-A-T. Head on over to the Patreon if you want to get the episodes early or mm -hmm. if you want the video version. That's at patreon.com slash nocat. Yeah, and we just want to say to everyone who reaches out to us or supports us on Patreon, thank you so much. We, thank we you. We really appreciate it. It means a lot to us every time. It's kind of a thing. I check it way too often because mm -hmm. I'm like, ooh, is anybody talking about this yeah, week's episode? Jeff, like, checks a thing. Jeff texts me and then I get, like, a little boost to him. Like, oh, there's, like, stuff happening out there on the internet. Yeah, so thank you all for that. Oh, and if you like t-shirts and our podcast artwork, head on over to noonecanknowaboutthis.com and click the t-shirt link, or head over to etsy.com and type in N-O-C-K-A-T. That should take you there. Yeah, pick up some shirts. Enjoy the shirts. For you, your friends, your family. Everybody in your dogs. life. <laughs> your dogs. And with that, here's a taste of next week. Oh, no one could know about this. Brent, our show is going to suddenly become only about the Jerky Boys for like three episodes. And I'm, I'm a little sad. Yeah. And part of me is dreading it. What's the Jerky Boys? Uh oh. Oh, no. Oh, I thought you said the Jerky Boys. <laughs> no. I started reading an article about what happened to the Jerky Boys. And we just didn't stop talking about it, and I didn't stop reading it for hours. It spans three episodes. The Jerkopolis. The Jerk Trilogy.